G'day everyone and welcome back to Nat's Knackers Yard. Um, I'll be Nat and this will be my Knackers Yard. Uh, a little bit of space because uh, Kit's out on the road at the moment. Um, yeah, by way of update, oh you can still see a scar around that. A tank sticker of sort of that. Um, the uh, CB400 is pretty much good to go. Um, I deliberately left it because I wanted the paint to settle because uh, I was marking it by uh, doing stuff. So. Um, I may go for the decals this weekend and a polish, I don't know. But essentially that's MOTable and do need to get some mirrors for it. So pretty much there or thereabouts. Kermit, the um, uh, ZXR, uh, ZX6R, sorry. Um, there were issues with jetting, I've had some weird issues with jetting. So I was convinced it was the jetting that was the problem. Looked up online um, and um, found that it was supposed to be jetted to 160 it was jetted to 140 um, so no so we're wrong it's supposed to be jetted to 155 and 175 uh, on the insides and, and middle um, of the four um, so I ordered them um, then Dan Barnes the actual fucking legend that he is um, uh, sent me his Haynes manual with some other bits that I'll show you again in a second uh, cheers mate really useful really really useful diamond um, and I looked it up. Now this is a G model, so it's 99, or wrong, yeah, it's a 99 G model. Um, about the last of them, to be honest, before, um, you know, like two months later, because it's um, uh, registered as November that year, um, before we went to the J model. Now the J model is 155175. The G model is 140. That is a massive difference, and I don't quite get why that's stock. So, what I have done is I ordered uh, 155s, 175s, and 160s, thinking if I'm going 155, 175 with that big bad boy exhaust, it might be one up. Um, and I've basically thrown in what arrived first, which happened to be the uh, 175s times two and two 160s. Um, so that's inside outside I can't remember which way it goes I think it's higher in the middle pair than in the outside pair I can't quite remember um, yeah so I've chucked them in I've also I've just bolted it down like a fool uh, I've also my f uh, the issue I also had the issue that it was running straight gravity off the tank which it can do apparently but for the sake of 15 quid I've got a fuel pump in there as well and I also found the attachments to do it so what I'm going to do now is chuck some fuel in and we'll see how we go because I want it running off its tank uh, I've drained the tank because the tank was stale um, but uh, yeah it's fairly yellow fuel that came out of there just dip your back a bit I haven't got a lot of fuel now the tap works but it's ugly so the cover has disappeared from it um, so it is a uh, uh, it is you know, adjustable from pliers. I also don't know which way is um, reserve tank and which way is main tank, but I'm sure I'll work that out. I could probably look it up actually. I might have to do that. So I chuck in what I've got. About half a half a tank, so probably about three liters. Should be enough to get some activity, I suppose. All right. He says, I have no idea if that's enough to give you some activity, but we'll see. On the way on to the nose, we'll go for a bit of choke. Pretty much worked out that key now. It is just awkward. Hear the pump doing its thing. Bloody loud. There's a 
way of making that quieter. But it's a nice idle and that's with zero choke. Let's see if we can work it out. It's getting fuel through it, you can't hear that pump. It's not just pumping fresh air, which it was a second ago. You fool. Now let's give it a go, shall we? get my helmet. Right, shall we give this a go? These are some jelly spoons. Right. Let's see if we get anywhere, shall we? Quite tricky, there's no grips on this, so it's a little bit. I have no idea whether or not this even selects gear yet. Yeah? I know the brake's working off. Must be really careful around this, I think. Seems like I've found first. <laughs> front end being all over the place, that tyre is nigh on flat. Um, I'll chuck some air in see if that holds up. Don't have a new uh, poke this time, I, I'm not blowing white smoke everywhere. Seems to be getting rid of any cobwebs that it's got. Happy. Uh, 
Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll splice in my videos, but there was some horrendous riding and <laughs> revving, but that's pretty simple. You try and try and hold on to bare plastic, how dare you? Quite tricky. Um, I think what I might do is pump up that wheel. We'll pump up the front tyre first. I think I've got some old grip somewhere. I might just chuck one on just to do that again and make sure it was just me being a spaz rather than the bike being a spaz. Right, ticking away in the background is those tyres pumping up, or the rear tyre, and here's my uh, my care package <laughs> from Daniel. Uh, so that's a Kawasaki manual, which was the main thing that he offered, actually. Everything else is just a bonus. Well, this is a bonus too, so... And here's my point. So, online I got this saying... It didn't say J models, it just said the bike and the year. Uh, one on four, one five five. 157.5 so that's what I bought however if you look up at the G models main jet 140 which is what it was jetted at so I've now got it jetted at um, 1575 on 1 and 4 uh, and 160 on 2 and 3 and it seems to be okay um, other stuff that you got oh sorry there's a battery box because I forgot to say I bought a new battery for it there is some um, off. Uh, some flasher relays which are going to be really handy uh, as I go through so cheers buddy there's the rest of the uh, my jet stash some more jets that I've got he's lobbed in some indicators which I've got a feeling might be a bit big for this yeah they are but that's fine they'll come in useful on something and more than sure on a project somewhere there is a couple of brake cylinders there's a rear one there's a front one what's probably going to be used on this indicators and really cool little ones as well so um so what and while that's ticking away and i'm not entirely sure if you can hear me over the tech it's probably annoying you as much as me getting that um that is intensely illegal and i'm sure that's not a legal indicator um so i've got courtesy of mike i'm doing well off uh off subs um some really generous people out there which i'm really grateful for it's nice to build a bike from bits from others uh, i do have a rear bracket for a number plate so bracket for a number plate and it's also got the little holders for for um indicators which is cool right i might go for take two of a quick ride when i'm not being a fucking idiot and checking the tires first um, do what I say not as I do don't do that it's really stupid and I got carried away um, with excitement of seeing whether or not it moves I really should have checked that first that could have been quite dangerous fortunately I was just cruising up and down the hill but uh, yeah if I was doing <laughs> if I got carried away and went around the block which I was tempted to um, that could have been potentially really quite nasty right let's get these tyres up ok so attempt two but with some air in the tyres I can see the race element of this, it wants 
Maybe that's a sports bike thing, I have no frame of reference at all. But that banks really comfortably. It was stupid of me not to check those tyres before I got on it. Um, I just got a bit carried away. Um, yeah, that was so much of a better ride. That was actually really quite sure. The only thing that was worrying me was uh, the lack of a rear brake. But then having a look at the um, brake reservoir, nothing in it. Uh, I would chuck some in, but I just don't have any at the moment anyway. Um, it's probably a good thing that I haven't got any, because what I really need to do is just strip the brakes down, give them a good clean out, see if they need stuff. Uh, and then crack on. Um, desperately need some grips, but I put that off because um, I don't know about colours and, and the aesthetics, and I'm deliberately, deliberately, deliberately steering clear of that. But however, just get some black ones and that, you fucking idiot. It will go with whatever you've got. Um, I cleaned off the forks. I'm not entirely sure if I can get you in here. Ah, oh, you can. Look at that. I cleaned off the forks. No, I can't. Let me uh, Let me drop you a little bit. Yeah, I wiped the forks down earlier, and uh, uh, before I did that lap, they were a bit wet and, and gungy, but you know, it's been sat in the garage for years, what do you expect? Um, and what have I got? You can just about see there, so the right fork is misted, it's wet, but it's not pissing out. Right is bang on, uh, sorry, left is bang on right is a bit wet so what I think that's clean rather than uh, necessarily um, fork seals um, people get really concerned about fork seals go, oh, you, you know my forks are wet I must get I must replace my fork seals um, it's not necessarily the way uh, most of the time you can get away with just a good clean and that's all they need it's not getting away and half jobbing it it's all they need is they just got bits of grit around it so clean those out and always 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 try and clean them three or four times before you go to replace them um, changing fork seals is a, is a bit of a bugger of a job. It's entirely possible to do in your garage. It's a bit of a bugger in the job uh, in your garage, um, predominantly because there is a bolt in the bottom of there into a free spinning piece within the fork. Um, and an older bike and a less well maintained bike, you will have issues uh, with that. Uh, getting that off, that's a bit wet on that side, I think. Dry on that side. And that might be a fork seal because that is, I think, fork oil on the uh, on the drum. But we'll see. We'll see. Let's give it a clean off and see what happens. It could just be crap that's fallen on it. Um, but yeah, it would make sense if it's wet up here. It may have run onto the disc because that is, yeah, really quite wet. So it probably is fork seals. But we'll see. We'll see. We'll give it a clean. See what happens. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, I did find a trailing wire for that left indicator, but it hasn't fixed it. I didn't really expect it to, it just would have been nice. Um, so um, there's definitely something going on there. Um, but the broader so what, it's a running riding bike. I'm chuffed. There is, I'm not at the moment going to be pissing around too much with the um, engine. Now, it's cooled down too much for the pipes for me to show you but 
Um, I'm warm on all four. Oh, I've got, I'm not going to start it. Um, I've got heat on all four pipes. Um, two is cooler but does warm up. Um, that might sort itself out over time, but it does mean that it's running on all four, I think. Um, obviously, I need to piss around with um, the sparks and the and probably a compression test as well, just to keep Daniel happy as much as anything else. <sighs> well chuffed. So what? It's going to be stripping it down now. Um, fairings are all going to have to come off um, so I can actually get to stuff to start working on it. But I think in priority order it's going to be uh, brakes, brakes, or yeah, fork seals, brakes, brakes, um, all of which I could do with a fairing on, but it's easier off. Uh, and then beyond that is start digging through the electrics uh, as much as anything else to try and coax that left side indicator uh, back into life. Um, when I'm doing the electrics, I'll also have a look at how I do this rear indicator because, you know, please feel free to correct me, chaps, but I don't think having indicators in the uh, in the rear light and the brake light is um, road legal. Um, I think, well, I know certainly at the front you need to separate the distance separation between them, which is effectively your light. Um, so I know you need that at the front. It would be it would be strange not to need similar at the back. Um, I showed you the um, plate hanger uh, a few minutes ago. Uh, that's um, that will just drop in. I think we'll just drop in on that. Uh, and it will give me the indicator space as well, so happy with that. So that's while I'm doing the electrics. Um, then it's an on mass tart up. What I'm trying to convince myself to do, which I'm routinely fucking awful at, um, is to get it roadworthy, then MOT it without beautification. Um, because getting it beautiful and then finding bits on MOT that you have to piss around with you start endangering your nice fresh paintwork and and with something like this where you know there's a lot of stuff that's going to need paint the last thing I want to be doing is waking fairing on and off to fix stuff uh, once I've uh, once I've beautified it slightly um, as far as beautification goes I don't know um, uh, sacrilegious I know I don't like Karazaki green I think it's fucking horrible but I know I'm in the minority, uh, and I know that's one of the key selling points within um, within the Kawasaki lovers, particularly the the, the old retro look um, as well. So it's going to have to be, you know, it's going to need green in it, um, uh, even if I go black and green, which is probably where I'm going um, to be to kind of show my cards at this early stage. Um, right, cool. I think that'll do me for this one. Um, thanks for watching. I hope you're enjoying. I, I, I'm, I'm ecstatic. I did not expect to get this running in a week um it's just um in a week week two weeks two weeks i think i did not expect to get this moving to the point where i could take it around the block in this short amount of time i am um bloody ecstatic um there is still a long way to go though and my overarching plan is like i say to get this motable without beautification so that i can then mot um uh, sting at the same time as kermit um, and it just saves ars a, a an element of arsing around with higher vans and stuff like that and, and temporary insurance, etc, uh, etc. Et um, but yeah, fab little bike. I keep calling it a little bike. It's not as bloody huge. Um, doesn't feel that big when you're riding it, though. And um, yeah, I can see why people track bike it, because it wants to be on its side. <laughs> it wants to be banking. It doesn't, you know, its natural position is banking rather than straight up which is um, an interesting experience I mean, it's probably a sports bike thing and I'm used to um, more tourers and cruisers than I am a sports bike um, right fab that'll do me for now um, I'm going to chuck this up this evening I think next job um, is uh, breaking out the old Allen keys <laughs> and whipping off this fairing cheers all I'll catch you later on <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.